Welcome to the 10 minute tutorial for research. My name is Tara and I'm part of the research team at AWS. Today we're going to talk about running RStudio on AWS. I'm here with my friend Gotham. Gotham, I heard you're having some questions about running RStudio. Hi Tara, that's right. I'm a researcher working on computational approaches in bioengineering. I typically run R scripts on my laptop. Lately, I see that my laptop is running out of memory while I'm running my R scripts. Can you help me out? Absolutely. It's very easy to run R Studio on AWS, and the benefit of doing so is that you can run R on any machine you need. In, in your case, one with enough memory. Let me show you the community AMI that we will use. That's an Amazon machine image that will um, that we'll use to start R. So, so this this link is in the in the doobly doo below the YouTube video. And what you can see here is that this is an Amazon machine image which has a variety of software on it, not just R Studio, but R of course, and CUDA, and a variety of other support packages so that you have everything that you need in order to run R ready to go. Um, so you can see here that um, you're gonna wanna choose an uh, R Studio Omni. These are located in different regions. So you're gonna to wanna to choose one that is in a region that's either close to you so that you get the best performance um, to, to access that via the web, or maybe you'll want one that's close to your data or maybe somewhere in between if you're collaborating with people. Tara, I have a question. Will this be the same uh -huh. version of R that is on my laptop? That's a good question. It may or it may not be. So if you look here, you can see that this is R 4.0.2, which is pretty recent. And so um, if you're running a slightly older version, you may want to look down at the bottom of this page for some of the older AMIs, but also you can have to check that all the rest of your software stack is the same. So the nice thing about it is if you do run R on an Amazon machine image, you can save it. And so you can go back to it later if you want to keep that exact version of the of R and all the software that you have on it together. So let us uh, let us think about starting one of these. Gotham, do you have an AWS account? Yes, I do have an AWS account. Okay, so then if you were to click on, say, US East Ohio, it'll do the same thing as it does for me, which was it will bring up a your account and plop you into the place where you need to select an instance type. Now, you'd said that you were wanting something with a little bit more memory, and you can see here that this is where we choose different instance families, and there's all the specifications for all of these listed here, but probably want to get a sense of how much this is going to cost. So uh, what I've done here is I've gone to this on-demand instance pricing and I've looked at this region, US East Ohio and memory optimized instances, and there's a lot of them, but I filtered here by the R5 instances, which I think might be a good match for you. How much memory did you say you needed? Uh, I currently have about four gigs of RAM on my laptop, Tara. I would need about 16 mm -hmm. gigs of RAM. Okay, so it looks then that the R5 large would be a good instance type for you to choose. And you can see here that the on-demand hourly rate for that is listed. So then you'll know how much that will cost. We can go back here and we can choose the uh, instance family, the R5 instance, and we can select the R5 uh, large and choose that. Let's go ahead here through the panels. Step three, configure instance details. We don't need to change anything. Whoops. Um, we do not need to do anything in terms of adding storage. We don't need to change the tags, but we do need to, once we get to the security group, we do need to add a rule here. So what we're going to do is add a rule for uh, HTTP, and we're going to make sure that this allows access from anywhere. Okay. And that'll allow us to use the web to get to our, our studio machine. And then we review this and we can launch. And when we get to this key pair part, you can either select an existing key pair, create a new key pair, or in this case, we can actually proceed without a key pair if you don't intend to use SSH to get into this machine. So now I'm launching. It's gonna take a minute or two to come up. Right, so while it's launching, Tara, so 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 as far as I understand, through AWS, I see that I can access compute resources on demand mm -hmm. based on my needs for testing and also determining the right 
instance type for my research. Am I right so far? Absolutely. You can have any type of instance that you need for your research. So if you need more memory, you've got it. If you need a GPU, you can have it, anything like that. Let's go see how this is doing. We can click on the instance ID to get some information about the instance. We can see that it's running, although sometimes software does take a little time to come up on that. To get to this machine, what you're going to need is two pieces of information here, this IP address and this instance ID. This little icon here allows you to paste that IP address. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste this into the browser. So once you get here, you need a username, which is going to be RStudio. And the password is going to be the instance ID, which we'll copy and then paste in here. So it takes sometimes a second or two to load. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And now you can see that you've got uh, your RStudio set up here. And I like this because this uh, AMI comes with a bunch of instructions for, first of all, changing your password, which you'll want to do because we use that AMI ID as a password, and that's not necessarily the best thing in the world. Um, and uh, also, it's linked to Dropbox. So you can use Dropbox to get to your files and start, start accessing them and reading them in. So Tara, I don't use Dropbox currently, but I do have all my research data on Amazon S3. Uh, can I access that data? Absolutely. There is a nice library in R called uh, AWS.S3, and uh, in the doobly-doo, there is a link that describes how exactly you can connect to your Dropbox and use that to uh, sorry, to your sorry, to S3 bucket and use the S3 bucket instead of Dropbox, for example, to copy files to and from. It's very straightforward. So, so got them. Um, you know, basically to summarize, what we've done here is we've used this community AMI to create an R Studio instance that has all the software on it, and you've chosen that you wanted a memory-intensive image we, machine, virtual machine, and we created that. Um, and when you're done with the instance, then you will want to make sure that you might uh, that you will change the state. For example, you'll want to stop it. It's right right now it's running and you'll want to go there and either stop it or if you're done with it for good and you really want to get rid of it, then you can terminate it. So does this seem like this is going to help with your problems with your laptop? Absolutely, Tara. I think uh, uh, through the approach that you demonstrated, I would be able to do my analysis. Uh, but it's great that you're here to help me out with this now. What about the researchers that are watching this video? How can they get help? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm part of the research team at AWS, and sometimes I talk to researchers and help with specialty topics, but every university has a dedicated solution architect who's knowledgeable about all things AWS and can help researchers like you walk through AWS services. To get in touch with your account manager and your solution architect, email the address that's given in the link below. And I'm a part of the research team too, so email the link to get in touch. Thank you. Thanks, Gotham. Thank you.